Hey guys, welcome to this week's Camping with Steve. I am going to do an urban stealth camping tonight. It's snowed, it's looking pretty wintry around here. I'm going to slither into that valley over there and we're going to camp out for the night. Hopefully undetected, as soon as the power of darkness comes, I can get in there a lot less detected. So let's go camping. I had to move a little further into the woods because the spot I had picked out, somebody was already set up there. I saw their shopping cart and everything. So. I'm gonna set up a shelter first here because it's chilling off fast and tonight should be about minus 18 Celsius, which will be, I'll do the math. Sorry, I can't just do it in my head. But uh, yeah, very, very first thing, I gotta get a bit of a shelter set up here because that's the only thing that's gonna save me. It's getting colder as we speak. I don't have gloves on because I need the dexterity in my hands right now for this setup. As always, no fancy gear. I got the cheapest tarp I could grab from a local place called Canadian Tire. And we'll see if we can rig this up as a, as a shelter. Got this little camping hatchet thing, Woods brand. Not, uh, not fancy, but. <laughs> when you got a tent peg, anything's a hammer, hey? This will give me a little bit of shelter in there. And for, if you can't tell by now, I am not a real bushcraft guy. I'm just a camper that likes to go out to the city. So I'm just using real cheap equipment that I got from a place here called Canadian Tire, which is kind of like a hardware store. It's got a whole bunch of stuff. It's uh, in Canada. So get the Thermarest inflating. Once I could get in here, that should uh, should make things a lot more comfortable, and then we can hunker down. So this is unfortunately step two. Today is the thermarest, and then step three is all the other stuff. And then we'll get to the real step two. I'm gonna be try to I'm gonna try to be as quick and quiet as I can here, because I know they don't want me camping here, but. I'll explain more about that for any newcomers. The regulars know what's going on with this urban camping. But again, this was a, a fairly inexpensive backpack as far as, or sleeping bag, as far as sleeping bags go. They get crazy when you talk about backpacking in cold weather. I'll throw this in there and get it lofting up to give me some good heat power tonight. Okay, just about ready to crawl in there. So in here, out of the direct cold outside, I've lit one of these alcohol gel things. I don't sleep with that on, I'll tell you that. But I have a couple other things up my sleeve in case it does get too cold. An emergency bivy that I can throw my sleeping bag into. And this is made of like Tyvek stuff with a reflective layer inside. And then I have another, another one of these emergency fuel can things. Really, if it did get that cold, I would just kind of pack up and go back home because I am in the city, but I'm going to stick it through the night for you guys. So I'm going to get comfortable. I'm going to crack a step two. Oh, Angus Monroe. Now, there's a guy. He owns 
high country beer. And I got an email from him asking if I'd like some beer. <laughs> I said, wow, do you know me? So he invited me down, took a tour of the brewery. It's real good stuff. It's actually made at the Rig Hand Distillery. It's a part of that brewery in Nisku, Alberta. So if you're in that neck of the woods, uh, it's worth a try. My wife really loves this beer too. Uh, but this is quite good. Today I'm enjoying a high country ale, an English pale ale. Mm -hmm. All right, nothing fancy tonight for dinner, but we'll get to that in a second. I'm just gonna enjoy this and then we'll continue on with the evening. Holy moly, it is cold. I'm going to preemptively put my sleeping bag into this emergency escape bivy so that I don't have to do that in the middle of the night. And the only thing keeping me from giving up and going home right now is this little can of gelled alcohol fuel. <clears throat> It'll be fine once I crawl into that sleeping bag. But until then, sitting around in this tent is not all that fun. I was going to go outside to do the cooking, but as soon as I got outside, I realized that's not going to happen. So, this, this bivy I'll keep ready. Hopefully the sleeping bag will fit in it. And this was pretty cheap. It's obviously not serious camping equipment. This is like for an emergency. But sleeping bag will go into there. And I do have, in case of emergency, if there's an animal around, I got bear spray. And that goes for any animal on four legs or two. And I'm gonna be cooking probably in here tonight. I have Canadian MREs, they're called IMPs. And it's a little box, it's got a lot of good stuff in it. So I gotta put that sleeping bag in there, work up the courage to go outside and grab a couple of the other odds and ends. But this is, I have to, I can't, I can't believe there's people that actually just live out here year round. Like I have the luxury of going home, these guys don't, oh man. it. Uh, Shows you it kind of is, kind of is pretty tough out here in the winter, that's for sure. But I'm gonna get this all ready. Oh, it's got a nice zipper. Oh, good. The zipper's on the same side as the sleeping bag. Perfect. I was worried about that. Oh, yes. It is so chilly that the camera battery didn't want to charge. That's a problem. So I'm gonna get into dinner real quick, and then I gotta throw a bunch of things in the sleeping bag with me. And I also wouldn't mind throwing this thing on to cook the meal with. So this is just one of those isobutane cylinders, which also they don't like to work when it's really cold, so it's another reason to get going. Uh, this little stove that screws onto the top of it, picked that up at that Canadian Tire place, I think, for $20 or something. So you don't need really the best gear. Of course, it makes it easier, but it's not necessary, technically. So we're going to crack open a Canadian IMP, Canadian MRE version. It's loaded with stuff. I'm not going to be able to eat it all. These are for hard working men in combat. And all I did was walk out here and just set up the tent. So I'm not going to need quite this much nutrients, but inside of the MRE pouch, you've got your main entree. And this case, it is turkey with orange sauce. And that comes in one of these pouches. And I'm gonna put that in a little bit of water in a pan to warm it up when I get to that. But I'll just show you every other neat little thing in here. A dessert pouch comes in the same type of foil container guy there. For dessert, sliced peaches. I don't like peaches. Okay, moving along, oh boy, there is a hamburger bun, that's concerning, but uh, what else do we have? Reese's Pieces peanut butter candy, well that's okay, could be nice, oh, some tropical trail mix, a uh, little strawberry jam, Oh, some um, espresso roast coffee, along with the coffee whitener and some sugar. There is a Frank Frank's Red Hot, 
because that stuff goes on just about anything. There's a drink mixing pouch where you can put your proper levels of water in there. Of course, you've got your utensil. Stuff keeps coming out of this like a magic bag. Oh, some Tic Tacs for afterwards. And oh, a couple more goodies in here. Peanut butter, because that's high in nutrients. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Grape sports drink. A uh, hand wipes. And the coolest thing that they throw in is a book of matches. So clearly, I'm not eating all of that. Basically, I'm going to eat this, may have some dessert, then I'm going to hunker down. So, that's everything in the MRE, or the Canadian IMP, and we'll get this cooking. This I gotta be careful with because if this spills, I'm gonna have a bad night. But there's no way I'm cooking outside right now. Good. Shouldn't take too much time at all. So, yeah, we are in the city and it is a hundred dollar fine to be camping in these parks between 11 p.m. and 5 a.m. So I'm not even breaking the law yet, but I'll be asleep when I am. So it's similar to the fine, like walking a dog off leash when it should be on the leash, uh, jaywalking, that type of thing. It's a ticket, uh, not a criminal offense, and it's public land. They just don't want you camping here at night. So I understand what they're getting at, but unfortunately, I like camping. So that's what's going to happen. So I do have... A group of people I met for coffee the other day, they have a, a little camping group and they invited me out to coffee in Nisku. And they are subscribers and I said, yeah, I'll come out for coffee for sure. They generously gave to the beer fund, which, you know, I'm not drinking a whole lot of beer on this trip because I'm carrying it all, but a lot of beer goes into the planning and editing and sitting around answering comments. So thank you to those fine folks that I met out there for coffee. And also to everybody that's uh, donated to the beer fund. I'm just going to dump this water out the door. And there's there's a lot, a lot of ventilation. So it's there's no danger about this being too humid. Anyways, all the other gracious benefactors that have donated to the beer donation fund you're really making things uh, a lot more easy on me because i'd be out here with my crummy old sleeping bag and not nearly enough beer or rum etc so thanks to everybody and i know i haven't done much on this trip but i i usually get out a little bit earlier and, and do some stuff so please subscribe if uh if you can handle this type of camping, it's it's always something different, usually. Uh, I'm just gonna take a bite of this and see how it is. It smells good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Unique. It's got little, uh, little past bits in there. Part I'm most scared about is the hamburger bun. And I know I'd get questions if I didn't open it up to show what it looks like but okay it looks like oh boy it's uh it's crumbly <laughs> well there's a bit of a staleness to it but clearly there obviously would be okay i wouldn't try to put a burger in it but i'm gonna dip it into this pasta sauce and see if that, if that helps. Mm. No, it doesn't. 
but in combat or something, this would be just great. And I used to be in air cadets when I was a kid, and on a survival camp, we did have these. The bread was always something to um, be explored delicately. Mm. Okay, I'm going to focus on this, and then I'm going to crawl into here because I just can't wait to get into this sleeping bag, and then we'll continue in the morning. It should warm up by then, but it's about minus 11, minus 12 Celsius right now, which is... Anyways. Yum, yum. Good morning. It is very challenging to try and stay warm with just a thin tarp, but I did it. I got through the night. I'm gonna get outside, cook some breakfast, pack up, and get out of here because I'm gonna have to reevaluate my gear. That was chilly. It is warmer than it was last night. My phone is saying it's about minus six degrees Celsius right now. Last night, closer to 16 below. But I'm gonna cook some breakfast, pack this up and get out of here. Not a lot of traffic on those trails right now because the weather is so miserable and I'm the only one nuts enough to be out here doing this. So I'm going to start this up. A subscriber told me a good hack you take a water bottle and a funnel, you put your eggs in and shake it up and put in stuff like an omelet. So it actually looks awful. Um, probably because I put mushrooms in it, but it looks severely disgusting. I'm gonna try and cook it up anyways. I'm sure it's fine. Maybe next time I just won't put the mushrooms in because I think that's what, what did it. I should have started that a little bit earlier because that's nice and, nice and warm. Here goes nothing. Oh man. No mushrooms in it next time. This better be better than it looks. Oh man, what have I done? What have I done? smells okay. You can see the color of the mushroom has permeated through the egg, so I'd leave the mushrooms out in the future or add them on the spot, but... Mm-hmm. Tastes like a scrambled omelet to me. So, that will warm me up nicely. And that egg mix, anything that'll freeze, put in the sleeping bag with you. That's, uh, I learned the hard way a few years ago, cell phone. I had to put the battery for this camera in the sleeping bag with me. Um, a bottle of water in the sleeping bag because it'll just keep it warm enough that it won't freeze on you. So I'm gonna chow down on this and then we're gonna get out of here and no one will be any the wiser unless they watch this video.
things of course never go back into the bag as nicely as they do when you're sitting in a nice warm home taking your time packing it legally but uh, when you do it in a frantic rush obviously it's a little hard to get it all in but I'm gonna get out to the car before anybody catches on to my escapades out here of course, just going for a walk with a big backpack on. That's all I'm doing. We'll get back up to the car. I think there shouldn't be anybody around now. Huh. It was a fine spot for the night and better than I left it. Well, the same. I didn't pick up any garbage today. There was none to be seen. I have made it back to the car and loaded up. I'm gonna get home to edit this. I know this type of camping isn't everyone's cup of tea, but there's a couple channels out there to do some more survivally extreme bushcrafty stuff that you could check out if that's what you're looking for. And if this is what you're looking for, I'm glad you found it. Um, please comment if there's any tips you've got for me, any ways to stay warm, any meal hacks, that type of thing. And we'll see you guys on next Thursday's video. So till then, you're camping with Steve. Thanks, guys.